I have to come 5 a.m. tomorrow morning? We have to work overnight tonight? I have to go to Chile for one month from tomorrow? Eh, 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 eh. Several years ago, I was working at JAXA, Japanese Space Agency, or Japanese NASA. I had a very interesting work life there, so I'm going to talk about it. This is our famous. JAXA, Japanese Space Agency, had several campuses in Japan. The most famous one is one at Tsukuba. This is the place where they build rockets. H2 rockets are these big rockets and then also the Japanese module of the International Space Station is also made here at Tsukuba. But the place I worked is at Sagamihara. This is where people build space telescopes mainly. They used to build these solid fuel rockets to launch space telescope, but now they, this rocket has retired. So nowadays they are just uh, building space telescopes. There are three important points that surprise me at this institute. The first thing is it's very, very exciting environment. So I belong to this Akari Infrared Space Telescope team. In this picture, behind me is the Akari Space Infrared Telescope and this telescope soon later went to space and then became a space telescope. It's very exciting to see something going to space right in front of your eyes. That was a very exciting experience to me. But not just the infrared group, other groups at the institute were also building space telescopes. For example, X-ray telescope group was building Suzaku experience telescope which later took a beautiful pictures of x-ray universe and then sent us pictures and also radio group was building VSOP2 this is a space radio interferometer in radio people sometimes combine several telescopes into one big telescope with interferometry technique but their group was trying to do that in space. If you can do that, you can artificially build a radio telescope with the size of the orbit of the space telescope. So it's much larger than the size of the Earth. That's a very exciting project. And also another group was building Hayabusa. Hayabusa is a sample return mission. Hayabusa flew to asteroid Itokawa, landed on it, took some sample and came back to the Earth. It was a very exciting mission. Some movies are made out of this story. And there was solar group was building Hinode solar telescope. And also there was a spacecraft going to the moon called Luna Air. And these projects were happening at the same time in one institute, ISIS. It was very exciting too work at such a place. And then before going to JAXA, I was working at Johns Hopkins University. I was with the Hubble Space Telescope ACS camera team. And research environment is very different between JAXA and the university. Here are some big differences. For example, at a university, individual professors are usually working on their own project. Different professors have different projects. At JAXA, for example, in infrared group, all the professors are working on infrared space telescope projects. So they are doing a big project together. So that's a big difference. So at JAXA, projects are bigger and more expensive. And then everyone is working on one project. And then JAXA is a, is a space agency. It's not an educational university. So in principle, there is no class, no teaching class at JAXA. While at the university, teaching is one of the main jobs of the university. So there are many classes I have to teach too. And then there are many students, thousands of undergrad students taking those classes. But JAXA, only graduate students of these professors are there. So very few students are at JAXA. That's another big difference. And then last point is JAXA life is super busy. For example, our infrared space telescope, only eight staffs were working on building the telescope and launching the telescope and operating the telescope, all done by eight people. That's heroic efforts by those eight people. Well, there are students and researchers like me helping. Faculties are only eight. And this is amazing effort. The responsibility and the workload of individual people are 
enormous. If this is NASA project, probably more than 10 times people are assigned to this project. It's, if you think about it, it's launching a space telescope with you know tens of thousands of parts. That's a, a big project. And Akali was launched 2006, February 22nd, uh, 5.30 a.m. Uh, because Akali is in a so-called non-synchronous orbit, it's flying the border between daylight time and night time. So it has to be launched at the sunrise. But to prepare launch, those staff need to work prepared overnight to, to make sure everything's working. It's tens of thousands of parts are working properly and it takes overnight. If something is not sure, then this launch of the telescope is easily delayed because the satellite is very expensive, you know. It's a uh, hundreds of million dollars project, hundreds of million dollars project. So you have to be very, very careful. You have to make sure everything is perfect when you launch. So it can be easily postponed, but then those stuff they need to work overnight every time they postpone the launch and then in the end the launch is postponed more than one month that means those eight people are working overnight almost for a month not every day but most of the month i myself i was working in chile at radio antenna station of university of chile after launch the satellite is going to fly over chile so we want to make sure the position and velocity and orbit is okay so I was waiting in Chile for a month, but for me it was okay because I'm in Chile. So uh, it's just an afternoon, so it's not too much. And then when the launch is delayed, um, I was just traveling around Chile, but it must have been a lot of work for those people working at the launch site. And then also after the launch, we need to download data and then we need to upload new commands. So we need to communicate with the satellite. And this happens because Akari is flying between daytime and nighttime. This happens every day at 5 a.m. and 5 p.m. 5 p.m. is okay, but 5 a.m. you have to wake up a little bit early and then this continues as long as satellite is flying. It doesn't matter weekends, there's no weekends, New Year's, satellite is coming every day. So someone has to be there then communicate with the satellite and then those very small number of people are taking turn to do this kind of job. What I'm surprised is no one else was complaining except me. <laughs> I was saying oh do you have to wake up at 5 a.m. Is that early? But you know everyone else was it almost seemed to me that willing to do this kind of job. That was surprising. Well if you think about it, those people have spent 20 years of their life to plan and build and launch the space telescope. And then now the space telescope is finally sending us the data. So, you know, they don't care 5 a.m. or 5 p.m. They love the telescope, so they don't mind waking up 5 a.m. That was very, you know, surprising thing to me. And then also I was very touched and moved. People there, super busy, you know, they're working around the clock. And everybody is super talented, you know, everybody, there are so many tiny problems in making a space telescope, you know, there are so many parts need to talk to each other and it is always a problem. But those people are super talented and super hardworking and solving these problems one by one by themselves. That was amazing to me. But more amazing was it seems those people are loving that. You know, they don't complain, you know, I, I have to work overnight, uh, I have to work on the weekends. You know, it seems like, you know, they're taking care of their own child. They love to work on, they love to fix or improve the telescope. That was most amazing to me. These people are amazing. I believe the success of the space telescope are uh, thanks to those hard-working, super talented people. That's what I learned when I worked there. So if you want to work at the space agency, there's always call for new positions. You know, for researcher you can work also administration jobs. And then nowadays they are accepting experienced individuals. So if you have some talent, you have a chance. And also every decade or so, they are looking for astronauts. So if you're interested, please check this URL. Okay. I stop here today. If you like the video, 
please like it and then please subscribe to my channel. Comments and questions are welcome. JAXA, Japanese NASA. Thank you for watching. See you next time.